And hello, everybody. It is Tom Chenault, and it is the Tom Chenault Show. I hope you're all having a great day. You can see I've got an extra chair here. I've got a surprise guest coming on to help me do the show in that second half. But it is going to be an epic show. I'm looking at my phone right here. Somebody just sent me a text. This is one of the better ways to recruit, I think. This is. Just, I am going to have to fill this thing out right now. It says... Tom, you have to take a free spot at the top of the tree with me. What's your phone number? Here's mine. Has anybody ever done that? Has anybody ever taken that bait? I mean, this is a stranger that has just decided again to see if I would join, join his company with a click at the top of the tree because I'm the only person that would ever be at the top of the tree with him. No, thanks. Anyway, I got a great guest today. Somebody that has been around for a very, very long time father of four, incredible human being, daughter, Rachel, son, Johnny, the photographer. Rachel's a yoga massage woman, just incredible. Rachel Lilly, married to Joe. Then we've got Anais and somebody else. I can't remember your other daughter's name. Honor or something like that, aren't you? You've been, Anaya, murdering, her, you've been murdering her name successfully for 17 years. Well, I just, that's why, if you were to name the kids, something that was actually a name, it would have been quite a bit easier. And now you all can understand exactly my at the, relationship. At the, time, at the time, they were both two thirds Russian. What can I tell you? All right, this is going to be John Melton Fogg. This is going to be a great show. The when Greatest Networker. Up. I don't know if you've read that book. He wrote it. So many people, I'd like to out all the people who say they wrote their books, but John really wrote them. It would blow your mind. Upline Magazine, one of the founders of that, good friends with everybody on the planet. I just begged him to go to the Association of Network Marketing Professionals event down in Dallas, Texas at the beginning of May. John, end of May, John Milton Fogg is a legend, a true legend. Everybody thought he was dead. He's not dead. He's living in Virginia. He looks great. He is great. He rides a motorcycle every day. I love him. How are you, John Milton Fogg? I'm uh, just overwhelmed by the introduction. How'd I do? I get a little well, nervous around you. Well, I, I, I understand why. <laughs> So, John, tell me what you've been doing with your life, man. You have been around. You're still writing constantly. You have become like the foremost expert in the world on speaking and listening. And you've actually written some books. That's become your magnificent obsession, as I understand. What's going on with you? Uh, blah, 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 blah. I am uh, rediscovering my life at age 71. I hadn't planned on that puppy. Yep. Uh, a, a truckload of transformation work. Uh, in fact, I, my latest, my last project was helping a Russian lady, a brilliant Russian lady, um, who's who's got a, a process of dealing with the subconscious mind that's just extraordinary. 10 years ago, I created a thing called Belief Busters. And I let it go, Tom, because I was not satisfied with the results that the people who took the course got. It, right. it wasn't, they, they didn't blow through it. They weren't being transformed left and right. A lot of good stuff, a lot of nice endorsements, but it just wasn't enough. And this woman's got the goods. She knows what she's doing. And they had a book that uh, she's written four of them. And their first book, they gave away free online. They had an English translation. And Google Translate on a bad day could not have been worse. This book was an embarrassment. And so I, I just reached out to her and I said, look, I have a couple of things in life I do really well and that are part of life purpose. And in all honesty, I would rather help you write your book than do my own. And your stuff deserves to come out in English just in the best possible way. So that was my latest one. 
And I just finished that two days ago, except that I just found out today after it's been designed and laid out and ready to be produced as a, a, a digital book. Now they want me to write a forward. So we got to backpedal and do that. But uh, that's what I've been doing. And, you know, I'm just I'm a happy hermit. And I now live I, I've, I've gotten my house back and I forgot that for the last 15 years, I'd given it away. <laughs> All right. Well, I am happy. I don't even want to go down that path right this second. I want to talk about where you've been, John, because you, Richard Brooke, a couple of other people have really been the, the primary drivers of how important communication, listening, personal development, the whole ball of wax is. You hang around, Art Jonak, for instance. I mean, you harangue, hang around with some very, very deep thinkers. And you and I go round and round a lot because I'm so superficial. And you want me to get a lot more deep most of the time. But talk about that, John. How important is it to just in constantly increase communication skills? Well, I, I think it's... Am I allowed to say bottom line, fundamental, most important? I, I think one of the things that I, I think about, Tom, is that you can do every possible training. You can have the greatest coach in the world. You can have, if you're a network marketer, you can have a brilliant upline who's just magical and marvelous. You can learn it all, you can read it all, you can listen to it all, and if you can't communicate, it doesn't mean squat. Right. And um, you guys came up brilliantly, I might add, and I don't do as much hyperbole as you do. I'm not as good at it. Um, I'm, just, I'm just too insincere, Tom, to be able to do it. Uh, with the contact mapping, Contact mapping is utterly brilliant, and unless you can ask the questions and truly be able to listen to the people you're having a conversation with, even that brilliant application is not helpful. Worthless. Really, communication is where it's at personally and professionally. This is a connection world. It's all based on our relationships. Just so happens network marketing was brilliantly inspired enough to realize that that relationship connection was a commercial miracle. Yeah. So let's take it a little farther on that. The entire profession has evolved to online click funnels and chat bots and the whole thing people are really getting away from talking to one another as human beings. And I truly believe that's the death of society, not the birth. And you use the tools of social media to increase straight communication between humans, not to avoid it. Do you agree with that or disagree, John? Absolutely agree. How do we do that? Now we got to give these people some meat and potatoes. How do we do uh, that? In conversation, especially in a business building, making a connection for a purpose conversation, the rule is you want to be more interested than interesting. And the, the, the problem with social media is it's the reverse of that. If you've got if you've got a timeline, we used to call them face pages before Facebook. Um, you've got a LinkedIn profile. You've got a blog. Your game is to be interesting, and from that create interest. That's the exact opposite of conversation of that real connection with people. And I think people do the interesting deal. And then let it go. So it's a one-way street. And, uh, you know, that just... Um, part of why I've been 
around network marketing with more reasons than anyone else I know could have for not being around network marketing for 30 years is that the business model harnesses relationship that serving other people, the communication of learning about who and how you are and parlaying that into a lovely income. I can't think of anything more wonderful to be well paid for than that. I love you. And that is a fact. And John, you are the best at doing that. Do people find you at johnmiltonfog.com or did you come up with some totally cruddy well, acronym? I've, How do people find you? I, I, I'm best found uh, at my home address. <laughs> <laughs> it's 3620 Garden Gate. <laughs> that is so Garden, funny. Virginia. You can find me there. That's best. Uh, reach out to me on Facebook. I actually just about, I don't know how long ago, Tom, six months ago, I just got fed up and I quit most of it. Um, it was the one way street that you brought up, the internet hustle, the how, how'd you, how'd you like to connect with me and I'll send you three, four, five emails a day, you know, and it, I just got sick of it. I resemble that remark. Well, you don't do that. I know what I'm kidding. Okay, John, we got to take a break. But you know, we don't really take a break. We're coming back right after this. This is Tom Chenault. We've got John Milton Fogg. Unbelievable show on the Genesis Communication Network. We really love you, Ted Anderson. Thank you for keeping us on the air for <laughs> all did. these years. <laughs> and yeah, John knows that Ted, he's been a, John's been a co-host on this show for years. We're coming back right after this. It's the Tom Chenault Show. And we are back, and I brought my Tom clone with me. Hello, John. <laughs> Hello to my favorite curmudgeon. How are you, John? Uh, who are you talking to, your dad or to me? <laughs> he, I, I have a different name Listen, for him, but I, he, I, in case it's a podcast on terrestrial radio. So Adrian, Louise, Adrian, Adrian Ben, knew, Joan, Sean Murphy, knew, David Scott. How to look up the word. Up, John. So... Anyway, Ben Benjamin Jones, uh, David Scoltelti is just reading a bunch of your old mag network marketing lifestyles magazines. Jim Percival, these guys are all like a hundred years old. They've never been on this show before, and they're all coming to see their old buddy John because everybody thought you were dead. That's what's so exciting about this is I feel like Jesus a little bit because I think I brought you back. So it's unbelievable, John. Every, you can talk now. Your your face has got to move. There you go. Tell them, they think you're like they think you're at Madame Tussauds. You're well. You're welcome to call me Lazarus. Go ahead. <laughs> there we go. Good. So, John, uh, <coughs> what are we doing with him? This is a contact mapping commercial. It is a contact mapping commercial. I'm glad we're. It's almost over. I'm glad we got to that part. <laughs> So John came, we asked John, gosh, five or six months ago now, if he would be willing to come into a little community group that we have on Facebook and talk about speaking and listening and what that is about. And he came in there. Eric Worry's on here. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm going to go out there and something, the Las Vegas Golden Geese or something are playing hockey tonight. And I wanted so badly to go watch, huh? It's the Golden, golden Geese. Oh, oh, the Golden oh, Knights. Oh, I thought it was the Golden Huge Geese. sports fans over here. <laughs> All right, sorry, the Golden Knights. Anyway, Eric says hi. This is so exciting. Unbelievable. So when you look at John's face, why don't tell your face how much fun you're having, John? So anyway, keep going about John and a course for speaking and listening. Yeah. Well, welcome to my life. Uh, John came in. <laughs> <laughs> John did an incredible training with us in the group and really got, took my, my level of understanding of just how important asking great questions and really listening to the answer is. And he did something specifically around discovering people's values and how important that is. And 
So we, that that may come up here in the in the body of the show in a minute. But in the in the next break, I want to talk to you about something that we have put together with John to build on that because I'm really excited about it, and I just think that the work that you do, John, pairs exactly with the impact that we're trying to have in the world, and I'm excited about it. So talk uh, so talk a little bit about just that you what you what you teed up for me was how to how to get to the heart of people with the question that gets at their values so can you talk just a little bit about that for a minute while before we have to come back 45 seconds 45 right. seconds just people, kidding that's, that's not 45 second question people are driven and led by one of two things either their values or their fears and when you are in conversation with people Part of what we'll be doing is teaching and, and practicing how to be alert to that, be aware of that, be aware of their values and be aware of their fears. And if you know my values and you know my fears, you can help me. If you don't, then you're just doing your own thing, not having anything to do with me. We'll continue this on the other side. We're coming back right after this. I did a heck of a job on that. And welcome back to the Tom Chenault Show. It is Tom Chenault. I hope you're all having a great day. It is so fun with John Milton Fogg because he is, he can't say hello in 30 seconds. So it is fun talking to this guy because he's such a deep thinker and he's got such access to communication and the spoken word and the listened word. And John, we've only got five minutes left. Talk to these people about how they're going to make their life that much better going forward in network marketing by being great speakers and listeners and how to go to your Facebook page and get tidbits on that all the time. You've always got programs going on where you're doing either writing a book or doing something that they're going to be able to plug into. Best place to find him is on his Facebook page, but I do not want to talk anymore. You are too valuable a guest. So just continue on. About what? About where you think. <laughs> about, about, the gold, about watching the golden, the golden Goose hockey game? And no, we're not talking about the Golden Goose hockey game. We wanted, yeah. Here's what Eric, in fact, Eric just put a comment up that's pretty interesting. In Harvard, there's a 75-year study on human longevity. One of the biggest findings, you'll live long if you have a deep down burning desire to have a group of loyal friends in your life. And you're not going to gain those friends by clicking things on Facebook, are you, John? You've got to develop the relationships and you've got to listen more than you talk, correct? Correct. <laughs> well, you just set me up with I can't answer in one word, so I did. I listen to you, Tom, and I do what you say. I hate that when you do. I, I hate it when you do that. That's unbelievable. So, okay, so John. Look, the whole, the whole deal is speaking is asking questions. Listening is listening to the words and the music. The words are the left brain, logical, rational, conscious conversation. The music is the feeling, the emotion, the subconscious, if you'll allow. And that's what you listen to and you learn who and how that other human being that you're talking to is. Because your whole deal, no matter what, and it sounds too airy-fairy for too many people. Your whole deal is how can I help you? That's it. That's the whole ball of wax and money and love and joy, all of it. How can I help you? What can I do to help you? And in order to help you, I can't lay on you what I think you need and want, I've got to learn what you need and want. And I can only do that through conversation. John, our relationship, yours and mine, started many years ago at a mastermind. And you and I didn't like each other very well. But then and it we really- were, I was right. <laughs> we should not have continued. <laughs> <laughs> but then you ran into a real train wreck in your life. This is Chris Ebersberg, by the way, who was my upline in New Skin. 
and oh, has cool. a lot. Yeah, nice and he to meet, nice to meet you again and again and again and, and, he, and again. He came in the show to hear it and actually wanted to see you, John. So I said, better yet, come on camera. But where did our deep bond start? It didn't start network marketing. We were network marketing almost like not really liking each other very well. How deep did it get and how quickly did that happen? Because we finally found a common denominator. The bottom of a bottle. Bottom of a bottle. We found each other in the bottom of a bottle. Where I found you, you found me, and we fell in love with one another because we took the time to go deep. Correct or incorrect? I, I, my, your bottle was some cheap, I don't know, scotch or some crap like that. <laughs> and I was, I was into really sophisticated wine with a terroir, you know, I mean, Lafitte's and like that. But we still connected through that. <laughs> And we found out that no matter how quality the alcohol, the end result out of the other end was the same. And it was death, destruction, and doom. And both of us basically stopped that train. And that's where you and I became close, close friends, correct? Yeah, you were instrumental in my becoming sober. And you know what? You were instrumental in my staying sober. And I call you for sage wisdom a lot because of the relationship we've got. And you know, recently, in fact, today is like one of the best days of my life. And on this show last week, it was one of the worst days of my life. And it all tipped today because of friends like you, John. I have friends like you. I have friends like Eric that I can talk to about the tough stuff. And don't you ever think that you're gonna be able to get that on a Facebook click or on a social media that. You've got to go deep. So go find them in those funnels and all that jazz. But what you want to do is go deeper. With people the, blessing like of, the blessing of social media, Tom, is how it extends your reach. Amen. But, it, but you know what it's like? It's like, you ever seen those toys that kids have or old fashioned shopkeepers? They John, used to reach up. We got to take a break. Just hold your hands right oh. there. Don't move. Okay. We're coming back right after this. And we're back. You're going to have to do that twice. All right, so keep going, John. I'm a terrible talk show host. Well, when, when I was a kid, the guys in the general stores and the shoe stores, they would have stuff up on the top shelf, and the top shelf would be 20 feet high, and they would have these sticks with, with like triggers on one end, and they would reach up and grab that product or grab those shoes and bring it down. That's social media. You can reach out and you grab that thing, but the end result is get it in your hand. The end yeah. result is bring it close to you. So social media is great for doing that long outreach and bringing people in. And then the years ago, I learned the best way to connect with people on the internet and have success marketing on the internet is get them off the internet. Yeah, oh good. Get them in yeah. conversation. And I just saw Jason Cardamone, who's an old friend of mine. He ran an ad today and he said, We're, and he, and he said, if you want to know, be, be part of this program, you have to comment, but everything we're doing is offline. We're building this business offline. Do not even think about talking to me about doing it online. And he had like 300 comments because I think people are sick of that parade. And I think you hit the nail on the head, but your connections and your contacts that are in Facebook, the average social network last 10 years. So that's probably MySpace. That's probably Facebook. I want you to think about this a little bit. Where are you putting all your data, all your friends? It's not safe. It's not safe book. It's Facebook. And he's got something right here that's going to change your life. Talk about that a little bit, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. It is a matter of time before... Facebook, like any other network that came before it and any that will come after it, is just not going to be the place where everybody hangs out anymore. Yeah. And you're seeing the cracks because they're doing stuff where they're showing your chat data to corporations and all kinds of goofy stuff that they have had to eat all kinds of crow about. And sooner or later, people are going to be tired of that. And if you if you woke up tomorrow and Facebook was gone or you woke up tomorrow and Facebook decided they didn't like you and turned you off, for no good reason and it's a free service and so you have no recourse how big of trouble would your business be in it'd be in pretty big trouble yeah 
And so you've got to have a place where you're taking care of your relationships because they are your most valuable asset and they're not to be taken for granted. And so contact mapping is designed to do that. And so I, that's, that's really powerful, but I, I want to go back to something that John said in, in of the last course segment. You do. Because do you want him for a dad right too? He, I do. I just, you know, so <laughs> I, I want to go back, back to something that you said. In, in the segment. Adrian, I understand. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is like group therapy. It's great. So, so speaking is asking questions and listening is listening to the words in the music. And all the time, you know, we talk about this coffee shop interview, which is this training guide that we have about how to do conversation well. But I think a lot of people get stuck on like, okay, but how do I really play that out live when I don't know what the person's going to say next? And our whole thing is that the script is that there is no script. Forgive interrupting, but I know we're on the radio. We got a time limit. Your questions come from your listening. Completely agree. But I think people have a hard time with that. Enter the contact mapping, listening your way to a breakthrough course with John Milton Fogg. So we, we get this question all the time and people are looking for a little bit deeper coaching and understanding about how do you really go and build conversations, relationships, and listening the right way. And when we kept getting that question, the obvious person to take that to is John. And so we have developed a course that is highly interactive, that's highly, uh, re- that, that is highly involved for you in this process to teach you how to do that well. And we want you to go and check it out. So if you go to contactmapping.com slash listening, you're going to learn about what we're doing there. And I think you're going to be really excited about it. Contactmapping.com listening slash listening. Oh, how come I didn't know about this? I, you know, you're on a need to know. <laughs> I'm on a, I've been talking I'm, to my real father. I'm, I'm, I was talking to your real dad. That is so sad. All right. Contactmapping.com forward slash listening. Go there right now. Listen to this thing. Go see what John Milton Fogg's going to do. He will be driving this thing. Adrian and I will be there. We'll be back right after this. And we're back. Hello, everybody. We are uh, rid of John Milton Fogg. John, you're out of here. I didn't realize that. So everybody is done. We've got to switch over. I've got a new co-host coming on the show right now. John, it was great seeing you. I love you with all my heart. But Janine Finney is 10 times more fun as is my co-host. Don't move yet, John. Keep the camera on John for one second. I want him to say hi to this beautiful and wonderful wife of mine. Say hi to John Fogg, Denise. I love you, John. Oh, there you are. I got to look at right the camera. Yeah. Oh, no. I, am I looking here? No, there? you're looking up there. Oh, yeah. Looking up there. Look, at, right. the green, look at the green dot, baby. That's me. <laughs> well, we love you, John. I love you, John. Thanks for being on. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our I next guest. Oh, is, I don't have to have the headphones. Or no, no, yeah, no headphones. Oh. We can make out. Oh, my hair want. looks so much better. Yeah. So our next <laughs> guest is unbelievable. We've got the flip flop CEO. She is absolutely incredible. She is with us right now. Uh, I think is she on here? Is she on the screen, Marianne? I don't see her. There she is. Look at her. She is in the building. The most beautiful woman nice in the world. Huh? Nice uh, Denise you. says, uh, "Why don't you?" take it down the road and introduce her and how come you love her so much. And I think I'm going to flip most of this thing to you, even though she is one heck of a woman who's been married a very long time. <laughs> no, I think it, it'll be fun. Okay. We'll, we'll just do it together. All right. Um, but I, I love Janine and I have to sit straight up. Yeah. And you I don't look lean over. Camera. Yeah. And you have to look at the camera. <laughs> so, so. It's her first day on the job. <laughs> In the studio, the studio is new. Um, hi, Janine, how are you? Great, thank you. <laughs> um, yes, I love Janine Finney and because of the relationship that she has with her daughter, they've built a network marketing business together. And what they found is that there was uh, a missing link, which was we really needed to be able to attract other women into the business in a powerful and um, inspirational way. And so they ended up writing two books. One, they started out with one book and, and forgive me, Janine, because do you see that little dot right there? It has my initials on it. It's because I have to put stickers I on my I steal and give away every book. And I read this book 
And I thought it was so good that she, she came downstairs and said, Tom, you cannot have that book. So she kind of put the mark of all my favorite books. I put my stickers on and, you know, I literally have to threaten him to, to not take my books. Um, and so, and the first book was so successful that you ended up writing a second book together with your daughter, Lori. And, um, and what I think is most powerful is, um, they're really unbelievable tools to be able to use to build your business because after reading the stories in the back, you have an idea of where people came from and whoever you're sitting with, you can point them to that story and say, I think that you'd really like this story and you could see where this person was, where they came from and where they, uh, you know, where the transformation occurred. And so the, the books are, incredible and you and your daughter did such a great job writing them um but i want to ask you we have to take a break no we don't oh, it's we? Kidding. No. <laughs> I know, that's I a kidding. long introduction though that was hilarious um but i want to ask you how you two got started in network marketing and how it went at the beginning for you yes well um Lori is when it got started in network marketing and she tried to recruit me and I wanted nothing to do with it because I had had an experience like a lot of people 30 plus years ago where somebody did the bait and switch, invited me over to their house for dinner. And I got there and it ended up being a presentation. And I was absolutely so turned off that I said, I will never have anything to do with this profession. And because of that experience, we battled for about a year. And finally, I actually read a book that... Uh, made the light bulb go on for me. I went from being the biggest skeptic on the planet to being the absolute biggest cheerleader. And um, so I changed my mind. I got in, jumped in with both feet. We did this together. But what we found is that as we started to build our team and um, bring other people on, what would happen is the same thing that happened to Lori. We would, somebody would be really excited while they were talking to us. They'd go home and they would meet with the dream stealer at home that would say, oh, you're not going to do one of those things. Those don't work. And the person would become deflated and they would just, you know, a lot of times just start doubting themselves. Just like, fortunately, Lori did, never doubted herself. But um, we just wanted to be, we wanted to uh, kind of bubble wrap that person when they went home. We wanted to give them something that they could carry with them in the door. And before they started just wah, throwing up all the, the things that we do when we're so excited and alienating themselves, we wanted them to have um, a tool that they could just hand to somebody and say, oh my gosh, it sounds like you've had a different experience. Could you just read this and let's talk about it? So something that would speak for them, because what happens is when they first are getting involved, they can't deal with the objections. They have no idea how. And so um, we just felt like there was a need for a really sassy girlfriend to girlfriend style uh, resource that just kind of calls out all the skepticism. Yes. Yeah. That And it's so true because they don't have the skills yet. They have the um, the motivation and they're, they're so excited, but then to be able to, um, you know, thwart the, the people that are fearful of us stepping out, you, right. you do need a tool and you need, you need something to be able to help you um, talk through those points. And it isn't a bunch of, I was trying to find some stats. It's this book's full of stats. And it's full of stuff that's going to help you build your business. It's not a bunch of just hunky dory, you know, girly stuff. I liked the book because I, there was a lot of Steve Jobs quotes. There was a lot of meat and potatoes, a lot of real life financial experiences that these people had. It is a great book. It isn't a nitty, you know, it, it, you know, it's kind of talked to like it was sassy girls talking and it is kind of like that. But at the end of the day, it's also a real straight look into network marketing and building a business as a female. And I love that. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I love that it was your daughter that got you into network marketing. And you said at one point that there was a light bulb that turned on. What was, what was that for you? You know, I had a picture of what network marketing looked like. And I thought it was the big rah-rah meetings in the hotels and I 
I, my little bit of experience with it was what I thought it looked like. And what I realized was that it was really about um, helping other people. It was, it was actually what I had always wished for is a business that rewarded you for helping other people. Um, in, in corporate America, in the corporate world, you know, it's so competitive and we have to look over our shoulder. And I always felt like Pollyanna in that situation and I always wished that there could be a different model. And when I, when I discovered this and really understood it and took the time to understand it, I realized that this was the business model that makes so much sense. Yeah, it, it's so, I, and it, it, for women, I think it's the best profession because it's about gathering a team, which we do naturally. It's about lifting each other up, which we do naturally. And it's about serving others, which we do naturally. (laughs) So yeah, you're absolutely right. And the challenge is that so many women are praying for what we have, but they don't recognize it because of the misconceptions. Just like I had, they think it's something completely different than it is. And that's why we really want this book to get in the hands of the people that are skeptical, the people that don't understand. Because once we walk them through every single one of the things that, that, that are not correct, um, you, you've got to fall in love with this business. It's everything that women do naturally, just as you said. And what we found is that most of the people that have received our books and have been um, using our books for, for since it was first written are people that are already in network marketing. People give it to their teams as an incentive gift or as a Christmas gift or a convention. And that's really not what we had in, intended. We really thought that people would give the book to the people that are skeptical. <laughs> And that's not what's happening. And so we've just kind of um, re-emerged to cast the vision because I don't think we did a very good job of casting that vision of how to use the book to build your business and you know how to use it to bridge that, that gap. I think a lot of times um, really in this business, we have two things that we represent, the products and the business opportunity. They're two completely different things. Right. And- if we're going to provide a solution to people, we need to know what it is that they need and whether we should offer them the products or whether we should offer them the business. And um, so this is a tool that can bridge that gap and help make it more comfortable to talk about the business. And I love that you said that, that there's really two different roads because it was like John Milton Fogg was saying um, about people are either driven by their fears or their values. You know, and you don't know that unless you have a conversation with people and they could be, you know, outwardly showing uh, that they need the products, you know, if you're selling nutritional products, but what you don't need without, what you don't know without having a conversation with them is that they may need the money more than they need the products right now. And so you're right. It's, it's all in having that conversation and seeing seeing what's missing and what they need in their life. And the skeptics, you know, it's just misinformation and, you know, not being educated about our profession. And like you said, too, uh, you only have to have one bad experience for you to back out and say, that's just not for me. Exactly. Another thing that is uh, similar to what Uh, the greatest network marketer uh, that that the point of that book is um, duplication and, you know, doing what duplicates. And I think that's another reason why it's really important to use a book Um, because whether you're a novice, whether it's your first day in the business or, you know, you're a, a professional and been doing this your whole life, you can still use a book. And what happens is I've talked to a lot of people that say they want to read the book and kind of study it so that they know what to say back to people that are skeptical. And the truth is, it's not going to work the same way as just handing them a book because we don't even always know what their objection is, what thing it is that they're stuck on. And because the book just kind of one by one just addresses all of the things that are that are myths it is going to do it more effectively. So the fact that it duplicates, it, it fits into a system that duplicates is another thing that's really important. That's really, really cool. We're gonna take a little break and we're gonna come back right after this. It will be fun. I'm gonna kick Denise out for a second because I still wanna talk a little more contact mapping. 
uh, before we go there. Are you speaking at Women's Go Pro in two days? Yes, Tom. You are? Yes, are you excited Tom. about that? Absolutely. Are you nervous at all about your speech? Uh, no, yes. I'm not. I'm not. I'm practicing my <laughs> speech because it's important. Yes. And uh, what's it about? Follow up. Follow up. That's good. And are you any good at follow up? I'm getting better. Who's the best guy you know at follow up? Thank you. All right. We'll be back right after this. All right. We're back. It's Tom Chinoff and it's commercial time. So this is more fun than anything. This is the funnest part of the show, Janine, because then we talk about contact mapping. We talk about you. We talk about women's GoPro. We're going. It's going to be the best. Unbelievable. It is so fun. And all my men, you are so dumb. They have a Gatsby party on Sunday night, which it is a fashion show. You have never seen more beautiful women dressed to the nines. I'm going to look like Gatsby. Who's Gatsby? I'm going to look like, I think I'll look like F. Scott Fitzgerald. And, Scott. and you're in shock that I even knew who wrote that book. But the point I make to all of you is you've got to go to Women's Go Pro. The link is in the comments. It is an epic adventure for men and for women. Denise is speaking, but Eric and Marina Wari do such a job at this thing. It's unbelievable. Don't you agree? It's awesome. And it's, it's a really, what I love about it is I think there's a real deep sense of community. I think because of the fact that it's, I don't know, 90% women that there it is, it just feels very connectional in that way. And if you're a guy that's there, it, you know, I think you're really welcomed and, and appreciated for the fact that you are showing up to that event, even though it's more targeted at women. And it was just really cool. I loved it. So it's a great event to go to. You want to be there without a doubt. All right. Contactmapping.com. Go there. What does it mean? <laughs> I'm a salesman, man. What a segue. What a I'm segue. a segwayer. Absolutely. Well, Janine, it's great to meet you. I have been a fan of yours for a long time. It's funny. A friend of mine, it was a huge fan of yours. And I would always see uh, posts from your Facebook page shared years ago and well, never uh, Tracy Germer. Yeah, do you know Tracy Germer? I don't, but thank you. I'm glad she shared the post. Yeah, totally. Totally. So it's wonderful to, to meet the woman behind it all. So his dad would not have been able to remember that name and I would have made that name up. <laughs> But I promise you, Tracy Germer does Tracy exist. Germer is a real person. He is not a chip off the old Tom, Tom, tall tail imagination. Do you know what she loves most about me? What is that? Peanut butter armpit. She I do. The, she saw I the video. It. Is that funny? As soon enough? as we sat down and said, what is that all about? That was the so. That you're in, you're in very good company. You, you got to come to one of our, come hang out with my kids sometime and you will get, you will hear many requests for peanut butter armpits. But I would <laughs> love that. I love their giggles. It was. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So try, try segue in that one. Yeah, we're going to. So <laughs> what, what I loved about that is how authentic it was. And what I love about Janine is how authentic she is and what contact mapping is all about is helping you to be more authentic. And, and that's really true. And I think it's, it's interesting because I genuinely see that that comes more naturally to women. And I think for men, we have to be more cognizant of putting down the shield and being, allowing ourselves to be vulnerable. But I think in both cases, it is an extremely powerful connectional thing that allows, when we do that, people really lean in and they feel like they can enter into our lives and that they can share the same way. And that allows you to build your business in a way that really is authentic. It allows you to have better relationships and not to chase people off by doing the old dinner party bait and switch. So go to contactmapping.com and check it out. The dinner party bait and switch. Remember when we <laughs> went to that, who was that guy, that old guy, his house, the Sanford's, Sanford's yeah. house. And his, he was like a hundred and his, Aunt or sister? It, his, this guy's 70th birthday party and his sister showed up and set up a table with samples of her network marketing product. And a whiteboard. And a whiteboard in the corner. And she knew zero people at this party. And that's what she did. It, it was, was awesome. Thing. We kicked her out. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Janine. And we're back with the incredible Janine Finney, the person behind the flip flop. I can't say it. Flip flop CEO. Tell her, do we have to talk about my tooth impediment? 
No. Is that the only impediment you I, have? I, I have? My tooth fell out, so I've got this crazy retainer, and so I can't say flip-flop CEO very well. So that's a problem. And it really bothers me when I have that. It's a complex, you know, I've been on the radio for so long uh -huh. that me not having good enunciation diction? and modulation uh -huh. and diction modulation. is really, really, really heartbreaking. Especially the modulation. The modulation part. <laughs> so anyway, she is a rock star. Guess who's in that one? You're in here? Oh, for the love of God. The only reason I said, that. I know I thought that. Page 125. I know it by heart. Well, she, Denise has it like dog-eared. She's got place max in it. No, she's got, do you want to read Denise, your part? No, when she sent the book, it was cute. Because look at these cute little bookmarks. It matches. I love it. All right. Take it away, baby. So you're uh, back. Yes, I'm back. No, it's, yeah, the... Are you, Janine, will you be in Vegas this weekend or not? I will not be there this weekend. Oh, sadly, no. Okay. Yes. We will I'm miss dealing, you. <laughs> I'm dealing with my, with my mom aging and all of those kinds of issues that are the next chapter for many of us. <laughs> I absolutely understand. Absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah. We all have. That's what I've I, I, really been present to over the last few weeks is how uh, life, all of us have life challenges and it just, none of us get out of this life unscathed. And at some point we have to deal with the, the hard stuff. So I hear you. But it's just one more of the blessings about this business that you can plan your work around your life instead of your life around your work. Isn't that true? And be where you need to be. And it's all those reasons why this is perfect for women. And, you know, that's, that's a really good point, because I think at this time, uh, this, this day and age, especially a lot of the younger people who are not moved and inspired by money, what they really are moved and inspired by is being able to give back and being, being able to have time freedom um, and control of their life. And so um, that, is, that is one of the, the top, top um, um, benefits of being a uh, uh, in a home-based business, for sure. That was the motivation that, that got Lori into this. She had just graduated from college. And in college, she would choose all the things she wanted to do and then plan her classes around those things. And she wanted a job. She wanted to make money doing the same thing. And it was like, where do you find that? So I was the one that thought she was absolutely crazy for even wanting that. And then I realized that it's, it's right there. It's just misunderstood. That's right. And it's the people that, you know, they have, um, they're well-meaning when they try to keep us safe from going into network marketing um, or direct sales. They're just uneducated. And um, that's one of the things that we have to do a better job at is being able to educate people. And that's absolutely what your books do in a really lovely way that's, like you said, it's you know, they can take it home, they can read it, they can pass it on. And it is duplicatable and anybody can do that. But that is one of our jobs in this profession is being able to educate people about the benefits. Well, one of the things, um, if I could just add, one of the things that doesn't work is to just hand somebody the book and ask them to read it. Because what will happen is it will go home, it'll sit on a nightstand somewhere, and they won't ever get around to reading it. And so, you know, until somebody opens the book and reads it, we're not going to we're not going to have changed their impression of our profession. So what really works well, and this is what I'm just kind of on a mission to um, to deliver this message is really asking the person just to read the first three chapters of the book. It takes 30 minutes. And if they're reading um, Does the Shoe Fit, it, it, they can read the welcome in 30 minutes. And in that amount of time, it is amazing how much different they are when they come back. Their walls have come down and allows you to have a healthier conversation. So, you know, I think a lot of times we just start talking to somebody about our business. And if you're looking at us like we have two heads because they're thinking they're never going to do that, we need to first get them to gain respect for network marketing and why people need to be working for residual income and all of those things. So um, I'm really an advocate of just asking them very sincerely from your heart to theirs, if they will read the first three chapters, take 30 minutes, and then let's have a healthy conversation about it. 
That's great. And I noticed that Sharon Lecter wrote the forward for it as well. And Kim Kiyosaki is, at, is going to be a, uh, one of the speakers this weekend at the, Go, at the women's uh, GoPro. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to look at the camera. Oh, nice. You're not getting eye contact. You're so fascinated <laughs> with her face. I am. I'm looking at Janine on the camera. Yeah. Um, so we've got a monitor here and it's difficult the first time to say on the camera, but you are dealing with a woman who's written a book and when you get the likes of Sharon Lecter and Kim Kiyosaki in yeah. the same room and in the same book, it's pretty cool stuff. We know both of those women and uh, we love all three of you. I think I like you best. Ah, oh, thank you. Wow. What a compliment. Yes, <laughs> Sharon is amazing. Oh my gosh. One of her books, I don't know if you've read it, Denise, but Outwitting the Devil. Oh my gosh. What a great book that is. I have not read that. I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to put that on the list for sure. Yeah, huge, um, very interesting background about that book, but I won't go there, but it's a great book to read. <laughs> so I think next week we've got uh, Louis Ariaza on here and one other guest. I don't know who it's going to be yet. Uh, hopefully it's Richard, Bre I can't talk. Richard Bliss Brooks. Yeah, you can't even say it. But at the end of the day, <laughs> uh, it's his birthday, so uh, we're going to try to get him on. But we love you, Janine, for coming on. You're a great woman. It made Denise's day to get to come over and be on the show too, so Thank you for being you and everybody. We will see you all next week on the Tom Chenault Show. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Janine. Thank you.